Let me know when you're ready. Just say yes. Welcome to the Apartment Rockstar Podcast. Join the Apartment Rockstar Robert Martinez, a real estate industry icon and two-time national independent renter owner of the year, as he interviews the best in multifamily apartment investing and management. Follow his journey to 10,000 units and beyond. Hey guys, welcome back to the Solutions by Southwest Utility Podcast. I am super excited to continue this Tell Me Your Story series. In 2018, one of the very first guests I had on this series was none other than Robert Martinez, um, CEO of Rockstar Capital. In 2018, we were honored to hear his story and what life looked like back then for he and his team over Rockstar Capital. And today, Day, July 2020, in the middle of a global pandemic, I am super, super, super grateful and excited for the opportunity to follow up with Robert um, and his team here today and talk a little bit more about has the story shifted? Um, where is Rockstar Capital currently at? Um, and what are their goals and how they're going to contribute uh, impacting the multifamily industry as we know it? So I've got two rock stars here today with me, Robert and Ian. And without further ado, uh, we'll kick things off by asking, who are you guys and why are you doing what you do? Uh, Robert, let's start with you. Well, Karen, first, thanks for having us on the show. It's really exciting to come back and connect with you again. You're right, it was two years ago when we had that first show. Uh, my name is Robert Martinez. Um, I'm owner, founder, and uh, CEO of Rockstar Capital Management. Uh, since 2011, Rockstar Capital has earned 17 city, state, and national apartment association awards. I'm a lo two-time local winner and a two-time national independent owner of the year. Uh, our company, you know, we, we come to play. You know, we're, we're known for our, our reputation is that we're very aggressive. Uh, we like to self-promote because we have a lot, we have a good story to talk about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the rock star name and the rock star story is one that you do see. You guys do an excellent job at telling your story um, and it being broadcasted. I mean, because it's a story worth telling. Uh, Robert, how did you get into the industry and uh, what led you to doing it? Yeah. So I, I had a, I was from corporate America, you know, like a lot of, like a lot of other people. I um, went to school, got good grades, graduated from Texas A&M, have an engineering degree, uh, went into corporate world and realized as a salesman, um, selling large and heavy pieces of equipment to guys with PhDs. And I started to realize that in corporate America, um, your boss wants you to make here, but you want to make here. And they like to change the rules from time to time to keep you within a certain number. And that didn't work for me. It's now, I, I want to be able to kill what I'm going to eat tonight. And if I plant a seed today, I want to harvest it in a couple of years. And when they take that or roll away from you, then you start to lose control of your life. And, you know, time's fleeting. We only have a certain amount of time on this world. And if you have goals, you have ambitions, you know, uh, and dreams. You got to have that time to get there. You got to be able to get compensated along the way. And so I didn't like what was going on. I started looking for a way to supplement my income. Uh, I found a real estate club. I thought I'd buy a few rent houses and maybe make three, four hundred dollars a month to offset the income that I was losing from my employer. And instead, I discovered uh, apartment investing. And uh, I realized that I had a natural skill set that I thought uh, worked well in this industry, and I've never looked back since. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, thank you for sharing that, Robert. Uh, we're also joined here by Mr. Ian, the newest addi addition to the Rockstar Capital team. Ian, do you want to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about who you are and your journey and what led you here to, uh, to Rockstar? Well, my name is Ian Mills. Like I said, I'm the director of operations here. Um, just joined the Rockstar team and, and was kind of attracted to it because I've been, um, you know, I've worked for some some large REITs and some large independent owners and really was attracted to the Rockstar brand because of, of their reputation and, and really kind of being out there and being on the, the leading edge, really yeah. kind of front, in front of the cutting edge mm -hmm. um, and, and trying things that are new and a little bit different and willing to take some risks that quite honestly, some of the more established companies aren't willing to take. And, you know, when I, when I talked to some friends about joining the, the, the team here, they were all like, wow, that's going to be, that's going to be a match made in heaven because you're always wanting to push the envelope and try new things. And, you know, Rockstar, that's who they are. That's, that's ingrained yes. in their DNA. Um, so, you know, I've, I've worked through the um, recruiting world and into HR and then uh, ended up partnering a little bit too close and ended up getting into operations uh, with a, a large national REIT. Uh, ran the Mid-Atlantic for them and then uh, went to work for um, the, the largest independent owner of apartments. Uh, on the East Coast, and then ended up get, coming back to Texas, working for a large company here in, in Houston. And 
um, then decided to come over here and join this team. And I'm super excited about it. I, I think we have all the foundations to, to really jump off and, and make some waves. And I, I think some people uh, around the industry are going, wow, this is going to be fun to watch. That's what Andrew and I say about once a week when we talk about the team at Rockstar. Like, what are they going to do next? Where are they going? What's the new thing today? Um, and it is so fun to watch and to be a part of. Um, let's talk about Rockstar specifically. Uh, Rockstar Capital, that is. where. What was Rockstar born out of? Um, and where is it going? What's the five-year, 10-year plan for your team? Well, yeah, well, Rockstar was born out of just like, again, my origin story of just the unfairness in corporate America. And I thought that I was going to buy some rent houses. I instead discovered apartment investing, and I was going to buy one deal a year, one deal a year. One, and we did that for the first few years of our operation. I mean, after only four years of our uh, three or four years of operation, I mean, we had less than 500 units. You know, when you look at we're at almost 4,000 today and we're nine years in, you know, something changed there. And it was just the belief that, you know what, I think we have a really good concept. I think we've got a good business model. And I think what we need is some leadership. So along the way, we started to um, increase the frequency of our purchases. But at the same time, we started having our track record get blown up and shown more and more. And so as a CEO today, I, I wear a lot of hats. But number one, I am the number one storyteller. It's my job to promote this business. It's my job to promote the success success stories in the company and our story. Um, and I think what we're doing is disrupting the industry. I don't think there's another group, certainly not locally, and I don't know about the national because I don't live nationally, but that has one person or somebody there that's associated with the brand of apartment management, apartment investing. And we're trying to do that. We've got a tremendous story. We have tremendous returns for our investors. And I think what you're seeing is us continuing to stand above the noise, us continuing to do things against the grain and do things the rock star way. We're following our own playbook, not somebody else's playbook. Absolutely. And I think for me, what stands out the most is there is no component of your leadership team that is so far removed from the day to day on site operations that cannot get on the phone with me or another vendor or whoever and say, oh, yeah, I'm aware of that issue at Westwood Village or, yeah, I know what's going on at Brookmore Hollow. Um, you guys are very much in the trenches um, and work really, truly alongside your on site team. Nobody's so far removed from what's going on uh, physically at each community. Well, that's really the spirit of our business that we want to be hands on. We want, and we don't want that to ever happen. So even as I've grown in this business and we had to bring in people and I give up some of the hats, I still try to have my pulse on, on yeah, my, my finger on the pulse of this business. Every single night, any review that comes in for any of our sites, mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. And when I see them, I react to them. And, and, I, and I try to correct it. And I try to uh, meet out to the people that are responsible for those sites from the PM to the district manager, to the regional manager, Ian sees it as the head, the head of operations. And we try to correct those issues right away. Every night I get a daily report from each of the regionals, not some automated report from, from, the, from the computer, from the management software, from the individual people that we've placed in charge. Cause that way I know that they're looking at their numbers. They know that I'm gonna ask about it. And, and that's how you keep the integrity of what you started. Absolutely. And it's how you hold people accountable. Yeah. I see what you're doing. You need to see what you're doing and you need to see the influence that you have on your community and what people are saying. Let's talk about COVID. And I think I might pull my hair out and scream if I say or lead with we are in unprecedented times because I feel like I've heard that about four hundred times in the past 30 days. So I'm not going to say that. But I will say that our industry has fundamentally been impacted by what's going on right now globally. Um, I was surprised at the beginning of this whole thing to see properties now being encouraged to take up a digital presence. For example, doing virtual tours. It nearly made me laugh because the fact that this is what it took, this is what it's taking to get online is a global pandemic. It made me a little weary, to be honest. I know that was not uh, what happened for you guys. You guys have been on the cutting edge of having a digital story and telling it well for years now. Um, but I know you have also felt the impact of COVID. So positive or negative, and I'd love feedback from both of you guys here. Um, where do you see, aside from virtual tours, because you're already doing them, what impact have you seen COVID create and what do you think is here to stay? Well, do you mind if I start out with that? I was like, you know, I think Rocks for Capital was built for COVID-19. <laughs> we were so ready to go. You know, I'm one of those guys that I, not only I like to push the edge, I have a thirst to get better. And really, I have a thirst to be number one. I do. I don't like to lose. Yep. And I want to make sure that if I, you know, I don't, I don't um, uh, envy anybody. I admire what I see and I try to adopt it for myself that we can bring it in. So I want everybody to succeed, but I want to be number one. Um, three years ago, four years ago, I got a chance to push that uh, um 
that thirst a little bit. And I got a chance to visit with both Grant Cardone and Gary Vaynerchuk. But the Gary Vaynerchuk one was the one that really left an impact for me because he asked me a question. And the question was, find a way to put yourself, how, how do you find a way to put yourself out of business? Mm. And I'm like, what did that mean? He's like, find a way to put yourself out of business and then come up with a defense against it. And I thought about it for a long time. And I didn't have the answer right when he told me that. I'm like, how would I put myself out of business? And he started giving us a story about what Netflix did to Blockbuster. Blockbuster wasn't ready for the evolution of digital. They, they didn't understand that it was all about uh, quick reaction. People wanted it on demand. And they got taken, you know, they were the largest uh, video supplier in the entire world, I think. And they got crushed by a little startup who was actually in their boardroom and wanted to partner with them. And they said no. They didn't understand the society trend. They didn't understand where the world was going and they got taken, you know, to the cleaners. And now Netflix is just a monster. Yeah. During COVID-19, what happened? They picked up like almost 20 million subscribers. Yeah. Like, how do you find 20 million late adopters, right? right? But they did because everybody was at home. And once Netflix gets them, they're in it. Well, let's go back to, to Rockstar. What would put us out of business? Really, what would put the apartment industry out of business? Okay, what well, people need food they need water and they need a head they, they need a roof over their head but how are they going to find you mm. if there's a global shutdown mm. they still need to move they still need to, to have somewhere to live and we realize wow we can get crushed if we don't have an online presence so going back to 16 we didn't really even have websites going back into 2015 that was our first real website so we were behind the curve but then from 15 to 17 before tracy tyler joined us we we spent that time trying to get better and when tracy joined us in late 17 we realized that not only do we not have websites we just basically had mannequins right they, they had no function other than to be a a, a online brochure there was no functionality to it right. we realized that our our res future residents could not tour our facilities unless we had the doors open mm -hmm. and so we adopted virtual tours three years ago when the very first concept was introduced the money the resources the manpower the revisions you know to where last year in 2019 i think around seven percent of all of our leases came through online only meaning they did the virtual tour they did the rental verification they did, uh, they did the screening everything online um uh only during COVID-19, that jumped to 35% of our leases. But, and we actually had less leases in 2019 than 20, um, in, in 2020 versus 2019, but we had a higher conversion. Mm. So during COVID-19, our market share actually went up. Okay. Market share went up because we were renewing. Everybody got more renewals than ever before, but we didn't stop leasing. So as we closed the back door, the front door was still open there and people were coming in. Everybody else had to close their door and stay home. Mm -hmm. We didn't. Our front door was open because we had a digital presence mm -hmm. and that was a, a, a blessing for us. But I think it proved the concept that we do things a little bit different at Rockstar. We're thinking ahead two, three years ahead. We just got to have a meeting right now. And like, Ian, what do you need to be more successful? What do you, what, cause I, I'm all about quality of life. What do you need to make your job easier? What do we need to make operations hum easier? So you don't have to think about it. Just one minute less yes. every day is going to give you a quality of life to where you're going to free your mind up to think about other things, mm -hmm. right? And so as my job has evolved, I've evolved from being that hands-on operator now to like being the guy that like, what do I need for my operations to be better? Yeah. You know, and it's been fantastic. Ian, what are your thoughts on COVID-19? Uh, I think COVID has is, is actually done what we've been trying to do for the last 10 years um, at, at the different associations at NAA and NMHC. Mm -hmm. We've been having innovation um, round tables and innovation meetings at every session. Uh, mm -hmm. In some cases, the entire conference was all about innovation. And we talked about um, needing virtual tours and talked about needing to meet residents where they want to be met. And quite honestly, the industry, you know, the, the apartment industry is very slow to adopt new things. Um, it's almost like pulling teeth, <laughs> uh, not even pulling hair, but pulling teeth uh, to get the apartment industry to make a change. And what COVID did is it took a lot of the the middle and late adopters and force them to get on board. Mm. Um, so how's that going to affect the apartment industry? I think is the last yep. part of the question, you know, the virtual touring and being able to, to do everything online with zero, with little to no touch with the leasing consultant is here. And yeah. it, it is full bore and people have now been forced to try it both from the management side and from the, the resident side. Mm -hmm. And the residents are going, I really like this. I really like being able to do the tour, get all the information I need. And then when I show up, it's a quick five, 10 minute tour to look at the actual unit I'm going to rent. Mm -hmm. And then I execute my lease right then and there. Yeah, I think that's where the change is. Anything that saves time 
makes money. Mm-hmm. And that's what Netflix did to Blockbuster. Yeah. It saved time. You didn't have to get in your car. You didn't have to um, uh, try to make it there before midnight. You got stuck with the rewind fees. You got yeah. stuck with all these kind of things, right, that if you grew up in that generation, yeah. you know what I was talking about. Netflix, you know, first it started with the mail, right. and then it turns into the digital presence. And now it is like, how did we ever do it before? Right. right? And that's what you were saying with the apartment world, is that they didn't catch up, and we got a chance to innovate ahead of time. Even some of our properties even have smart locks to where they don't even have to go to the office. They can go straight to the model unit. They can take the virtual tour there. I'm sorry, the, the online tour where they're actually yep. the physical tour and yeah. then go straight to the units. That's absolutely incredible. I, I think it all goes back to barrier to entry, right? Whenever you can minimize the barrier to entry. In terms of operations, right, within your organization, how do I eliminate things that waste time or, or um, serving as just busy fillers but are really not productive at all? Uh, but also with our residents, how do we eliminate the barriers? How do I eliminate any potential objection or obstacle that you could be dealing with that would prevent you from wanting to move forward with the decision here? Or be really fast about telling me that you're not interested so that I can stop wasting time on you because you're no longer a hot lead. Well, yes. and, and let's be honest, when somebody's coming in to rent an apartment, they've gone online. They, they probably have looked at 25 different mm-hmm. apartments online. They've selected five to go visit. They generally end up showing up at three before they decide on one of those mm-hmm. three. So literally they're walking in with deposit money and wanting to, to be sold. Yes. They, they want somebody to say, take my money. They yes. have it in their pocket ready to give to you. And where do we mess it up? We mess it up because we don't stand up and greet. Mm. Uh, we're distracted during the tour. We don't actually give them, listen to them when they come in. You know, one of the things that really aggravates me with a leasing consultant um, or with a, a property manager, even myself when I'm in there, somebody comes in and says, hi, I'm looking for a two-bedroom apartment for the beginning of next month. And so then I pull out my guest card and I'm like, so what, what size apartment are you looking for? Mm. And I've already told them I'm not listening to you. Yeah. And so I've, I've already kind of started messing up my sale. And so this really frees up our leasing consultants to be to be consultants, right? I'm going to consult you in the leasing process. I'm going to help you through it and provide you better customer service because I'm not worried about the sales process. Mm-hmm. I'm worried about consulting and helping you make the best decision. Yes. And that's going to become the value that, that our leasing consultants are going to have is very high touch point consulting over the phone via, via online means to be able to answer any and all questions instead of getting up, filling out the guest card, doing Mm -hmm. all the tours, that's all taken care of online for them. And so now I can just really be a consultant and help them find the perfect home. Absolutely. My mentor said, and he repeats it frequently, listening is so close to love that most people can't tell the difference. And when you show somebody that you're not listening by walk in, I'm looking for a two bedroom. Okay, great. Can we, you know, let's fill up this guest card. Uh, So what size unit are you looking for? Well, now I'm ticked off and now I'm not interested. Um, I think a huge part of what um, contributes to a very positive uh, leasing experience or an application experience is having the right people on the right seats on the bus. I know team and culture is huge. Um, You know, Ian, you briefly mentioned this when you were talking about your intro, about some of the things that drew you to Rockstar, this notion of constantly evolving and pushing the envelope and and being in a safe space to try new things. I empathize with that. It's one of the reasons why I love working with Andrew so much. We are constantly trying new things and it's a safe space to do so. And what an exciting environment to do it here within Rockstar, a portfolio of nearly 4,000 units to be able to push the envelope and try new things and really set the standard for the industry. Uh, you know, people are watching Rockstar. People are watching you and they're seeing, um, they're seeing what you guys are trying and will it work? And if it doesn't, how does Rockstar respond and react? Uh, team and culture is huge when it comes to trying new things though. And, uh, you know, having the right people in place to have trust, um, to give them the opportunity to try these new things. So let's talk about team and culture a little bit. How do you guys make sure that you have the right people on site, that you have the right people on your leadership team, that you have the right people spearheading new projects and initiatives? Um, how do you make sure? We fail a lot. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, quite honestly, we <laughs> fail forward. Yeah. Um, you know, I would love to say that we have that figured out and we, we make perfect hiring decisions every time, but we don't. Mm. Um, you know, sometimes we get the wrong people on the bus. Yeah. And it's not a matter of even on the right seat on the bus, they're on the wrong bus. Mm. And we we want to make our mistakes quickly. Um, so we're, we're going to hire the best people we can, but we're going to make corrections quickly when we need to as well. Mm. Um, when it comes to culture, you know, culture is um, a, a funny thing that everybody talks about, but nobody truly understands. Yes. And everybody expects, you know, 
when you talk to people about culture, their assumption is that it comes from the top and it's pushed down, and that's the furthest from the truth. Right. The, the line managers, a person closest to the actual things happening, are responsible for the company culture. Mm. So in this case, the community managers and maintenance leads are responsible for the company culture. Mm. And they're the ones that enforce it. They're the ones that aren't going to allow um, the energy vampire to sit there and, and suck the life out of everybody on site. They're going to maintain and hold people accountable. Um, and the expectation is we set, you know, I say we, Robert sets vision. Here's where we're going. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my role is to figure out how to get us there. Yes. Um, but really, we're not setting the culture. We're setting expectations. We're holding people accountable and, and ensuring they have ownership for their part. Um, but we allow them the, the freedom to fail. You mm-hmm. know, the, the term I use is fail forward. Um, when you make a mistake, learn from your mistake and keep going. And it's okay to make mistakes. And we let them know that it's okay to make mistakes. We're open and honest with our mistakes. When we make a mistake, we say, here's where I screwed up. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry for, for my screw up. I'm sorry that I let y'all down. Here's what I'm doing to correct it. But being being vulnerable and open to your team to say, I make mistakes too. It's okay. None of us are perfect. Yeah. Freeze them up to know that I'm not going to overreact when they make a mistake. And we're like, okay, what are we doing to fix it? What did you learn from it? Let's do the postmortem once once uh, we fixed it. Yes. And then we can go back and look at it and ensure that we don't make that same mistake again. But, you know, people are like, how do you ensure you do that? We fail a lot. That's mm-hmm. how we ensure we do it. I, you know, I think I think at my level, success is my duty for the company. Mm. You know, it's my duty to make sure that we get to the mountain that I told you that I promised you on when I recruited you to come to this company. And in that process, I'm going to go and I'm going to give you the best tools I can. I'm going to love you. I'm going to hold you tight. I'm going to give you the best training I can. I'm going to put you in a position to succeed. I'm going to make sure that you're compensated well so you're not ever feeling like, like you know, you're being taken advantage of. But then you got to do your part too. Mm-hmm. And if you don't succeed and if you don't, correct and evolve with this business, then it's time to make a change. I mean, the fact that Ian's sitting here right now is because I came to that realization, right? There's there's people in this business today that started with the business with me. They're no longer here today because they couldn't get to the mountain with me. Mm-hmm. And it, and it's it's a sad thing, but I, I, I give myself a little solace because I recognize this is my life mm-hmm. and it's my goals. And I'm going to be damned if I get to be 80 years old when I look back and think, why didn't I make a change? Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I try a little harder here when I still had the energy and I still had the time? You know, we have a shelf life. Right. And I want to make sure that my shelf life, I get the max benefit of it, that there is an ROI for the things that I've sacrificed and I give in my past for, for what I do today. And for the, everybody on the team, they need me to make that tough call. They need me to drive and bring in the best professionals so we can all get there. Because if we get to the mound, everybody's going to win. The leasing agents become property managers. Property managers become your next regional. Your regions become your new VPs of sales. And it just goes up and up and up. And and it's like if we're if if we're winning, we're all gonna win. Absolutely. And what what's the saying? It's what you tolerate, you encourage, right? And so the actions that you okay or we can just sweep under the rug, it's not a big deal today, but tomorrow at ten thousand units, it's a huge deal. And you don't have the same room for error that you did when you were at two hundred. Um you know, and and I, I think it's interesting that you guys mention this notion of failing forward, being able to fail in a safe space, but having a very high level of accountability, but also recognizing when the right people, it, it's not even being just on the right seat. You could be on the wrong bus altogether. And to your point, what you just mentioned, you're doing that person a service. You're literally doing them a great deed to let them know, hey, guess what? This isn't working and it, it you're not serving my team well, fine, but this isn't serving you. You're not living to your full potential in this environment, in this, you know, if it's a role or if it's the team or the industry, whatever it is, this isn't serving you. And I'm going to release you from that so that you can go flourish and do um, what you need to be doing. Uh, You guys are always, I mean, we talked about this a few minutes ago, but you guys are always pushing the envelope when it comes to tech. I remember when the first time I heard, Robert, you said you wanted to put Alexas in each of the, uh, the, I don't know if it was the leasing offices or in each of the units. I love that. I'm like, who is doing that? What in the world? And especially within the market that you're in, right? It's like you're bringing this very upscale lifestyle to markets that don't. You When you walk on a rock star property, I'll never forget when I went to visit uh, Cove and Oak Tree. One of them has a Starbucks machine. Which one is it? 
Both. Both. They both have a Starbucks machine. I went to go visit Eddie down there when we onboarded for billing, and I saw the Starbucks machine, and everybody in the office was like, do you see that? And then residents came in. They're like, do you see that? I'm like, hi, I'm Caroline. How are you? They're like, no, 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 no. I don't care. There's Starbucks in our leasing office. I'm like, I know. And they said, look, look at this. Look at this community that we get to call home. You're really creating an upscale lifestyle within, in, you know, a markets that it doesn't exist. It just, it's not there. Um, so what's new? What's coming? What's the next tech? What's the next thing that Rockstar is going to try? Well, you know, it's funny. I want to go back to something because I think Ian's a perfect fit for this company because mm -hmm. the fact, I remember when he first said it to me in his interview, fail forward, mm -hmm. made so much sense to me because that's what we do here. You know, everybody wants to minimize their losses, but I want to maximize my wins. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen if you're afraid to fail right? It doesn't happen. You're not going to get them all right. You know, I'm happy that we did uh, um, the virtual leasing three years ago. We made, we took all the arrows, right? For everybody else. We learned what works and what doesn't work. And people are going through that right now. They're, they're having to learn on the fly. We're moving on to the next thing, yes. you know? So I, I, I get really excited with that. Right. And so you have to be willing to fail because if you're, if you take the fear out of it, right. you have nothing left but wins. That's nothing left because you're going to fail for sure, but you're not going to fail all the time. You're a smart guy. You're a smart woman. You're going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Just don't let the momentum stop. Yeah. You know, so let's talk about the Alexis. I wanted to do that. We started to do that and it just didn't get any traction mm -hmm. and didn't get any traction because it was dependent on internet and it was really? dependent on consistent internet. Okay. And our first studio, we have it at one of our properties, right? And I had the first corporate team there and I didn't realize how bad the internet coverages are in some of our 1980s boxes, much less our 1960s and 70s. Mm -hmm. You gotta have consistent coverage. Mm -hmm. uh, um, what we try to focus on at Rockstar, our basic services, is the water coming out of the faucet and is it hot? Is my apartment 72 degrees or is it 86 like it is outside? If you take care of those, you're going to eliminate your move outs. But the next basic service that I think we really need to focus on is Wi-Fi connectivity. You know, last night uh, at, at, at my home, um, uh, we lost Wi-Fi. Oh, no. Right? And I don't have cable. Oh, I, no. I depend on Wi-Fi. My yes. kids depend on it for their games. I depend on to watch TV, whether it's Netflix, Prime, yes. whatever I want to do, to iTunes. And we didn't have it. And it sucked. Yeah. It was horrible for that four <laughs> hours or so. And I don't even know if it's working right now. I knew that it worked in my bedroom, but for some reason, it didn't work in, 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 in the media room. And so I'm worried about that when I get home. I, in fact, they just came to me right now. They go, wow, I don't have <laughs> Wi-Fi at home. But our, our residents go through this, too. So that was a problem with the Alexa. We couldn't guarantee okay. that. I think if you can guarantee that, mm -hmm. then they will work. Because how easy is it be? The idea with the Alexa was, hey, Alexa, pay my rent. Right. And we had models. We had this set up in certain apartments where the internet was great, but you have to re first rely on the re on the resident to have internet or it doesn't work. Right. Or two, you have to rely on good service, good speed. And it was, I had no idea how bad it was at one, at one of our sites where everybody's just like, yeah, it takes like hours to download something. Okay. And now we're, we're here at our, at our temporary office and it's yeah. like minutes, yeah. you know, like how come nobody told me, right, right. That, that it was that bad. But our res if it's that bad for us, our residents are going through that. Mm. So tech is great, but you got to have the right system and atmosphere with it. Yes. So we're working on that right now. Yeah. We're trying to figure out how we can bring internet everywhere. You'd be shocked at how much copper runs in to run the internet. Yeah. Um, and copper is actually, they're no longer supporting copper. The, the, yeah, it's amazing. The communication companies are no, no longer required to support copper. Yeah. And so when I look at, you know, Houston, just inside the Beltway, Mm-hmm. If you're not in one of those tall buildings, you probably have copper. Oh, yeah. And you're having trouble with your internet. It goes out when it rains because it shorts out. It, it You have issues with it. And so figuring out the the overall coverage, be it through the new 5G, if it actually uh, can produce about half of what they claim it can, that mm -hmm. will solve a lot of problems, but it's not going to be cheap um, for the first five years. Mm -hmm. So what do I do between now and 2025 in order to, to bridge that gap? And that's kind of the... The big piece that we gotta we're working on figuring out we're gonna yeah try some stuff and figure out what doesn't work so we can find the thing that works yeah, yeah. i really like innovation and tech i think it's a way to stand above the noise but another way to stand above the noise is as an expression that, that i like to borrow from you is the blocking and tackling mm. can you just do the basics right yeah if you can do the basics right chances are they're not going to leave mm. right but if you can't do the basics right and then you, ha you try to introduce tech it just it's just you're like what are you focusing on Yes. You're focusing on apartment living. You're focusing on resident housing. 
why can't you make that the best experience possible? So again, is the water coming out? Is, the, is there pressure? Is it hot? Is the air conditioning cold? Um, is there a washer and dryer in the unit? Nobody wants to go to a washroom. You want to have that unit. I mean, these are things that if you're a homeowner, you probably take for granted, but many of sure. our apartments are built in the 60s and 70s. They didn't have connections. Yeah, yeah. I, I get excited when I see that property's got connections there. Right. I'm going to add a washer and dryer right. to all those units. I'm going to stand there because my comp's not doing it. They don't want to spend the thousands of dollars, but they don't realize that above and beyond the price increase, you make your money when people renew yes and if they don't move out your NOI is going to jump which is what's going on during COVID-19 they're not renewing mm. I'm sorry they are renewing right. so they're not moving out and so the NOIs are jumping and so as we get occupancy we're seeing our occupancies move a little bit quicker which means our valuations are going up yeah it's so phenomenal. I mean it, it's a it's a business decision but it's also just can you just do the basics I mean, right. take care of the basics the business will take care of itself 100 percent customer service has been lost Mm. Um, we, with all the advanced tech, more and more people have not learned how to talk to people. Oh, that's huge. Um, yeah, I, I have um, one of the suppliers talks about my kids because I would bring my kids to different events and force them to talk to people. Mm -hmm. like, Your kids are very good about talking with people and being able to hold yeah. a conversation. We don't see that from high school level kids. Yes. And, you know, that's, that's just a skill that's not being taught anymore. We're allowing people to go into a cocoon, to live in um, Instagram. You yeah, know, I mean, you're right. on Instagram or Facebook, and that's where they live. And more and more of the kids are on Instagram. Right. You know, so their entire communication is on Instagram with photographs or emojis. Right. And so when I'm taking people who have only communicated that way pretty much through high school, and I'm putting them into a, a leasing office and say, hey, convince this person to lease with us, I have to teach them how to talk. Yeah. I have to teach them how to be nice. Yes. Um, you know, simple things like stand up when somebody enters a room. It's not being taught anymore. Right. Um, at, in the home. So, no. like when yeah. I, you know, I, I hate to say it, but you almost feel like you're you're teaching basic training. You you're, are. You're, I'm teaching you basic. You are. Human courtesy. Right. You know, when somebody walks into your home, you stand up, you greet them, you right. smile, um, you listen to people, you yes. take notes. So that's really kind of the, you know, that's the tech of the future is people who are actually going to be tech savvy, but also be able to talk to people. Right. That's what I'm looking forward to. That, that's going to be the synergy. It's really, I think, going to win. It's term. huge. I remember when we came to do a video about um, the toilet replacement project mm -hmm. at Westwood, your boys were there. Yeah. And we went and we went into one of the units. We took a look at some of the equipment um, and we talked to one of your managers. We talked to your on-site team. We talked to you and we talked about the equipment and your boys were there and um, they shook my hand. And we talked and they asked me a question and then I got to ask them and, and it was great. I'm like, this isn't the norm. This isn't the norm. And I'm infuriated with my generation in particular, which is actually the generation below millennials because I'm younger than a millennial. I'm infuriated. I am infuriated by my generation because we do not have people skills and I don't understand it. I don't understand why the average 23 year old can't stand up and shake somebody's hand and look at them in the eye. I don't get that. I don't understand why we're not talking to humans like they're humans and and able to hold a conversation and learn about how to appropriately sell somebody a home this industry is intimate that's what i always tell people it's so stinking it, it starts intimate. at home it starts at home i mean you go yes. back to the you know the 30s and 40s everybody would sit around the radio together and they would spend quality time when the tv came around uh, uh that slowed that down a little bit right they're watching tv but everybody's watching their own program today with cable with right. the internet with comp my kids will play computer games all day long if yeah. i let them yeah. if i don't pull them away from that they're going to lose those social skills mm -hmm. so you have to force them right and you have to and it's pulling teeth to say hi Right, because they represent themselves, but they represent you as well. Absolutely. And so I'm really glad that you said that about my children because I think that's something we talk about. But also, you know, I engage with them. Yes. I can be really busy with what's going on with me, but I take the time to engage yes. what's going on. I don't miss soccer practice. I make sure that I'm the one that takes them to soccer practice every single yes. time when I can, because I want to have that few minutes in the car. Now, when, when they when, when they did go to school, I wanted to know what was going on during school. Right. Tell me what happened. Tell me who got in trouble. Tell me what, what you did. Me. You know, what did you learn today? Those kind of things, right? Have that conversation so they don't lose social skills, because you're yes. right. They're there. And it's, it's funny, because my oldest, he's kind of quiet with everybody, but he gets, he puts his headphones on and he gets into his games and like there's another personality comes yes. out you know and it's like that's what they're used to well, you got to shake them of that because that's going to hurt them in the long run absolutely i was listening to our episode from 2018 and it's so funny how far we've all come um from that episode 
You were in your car during soccer practice, Robert. Yeah. I mean, you, we were literally filming a podcast episode and you had stepped out and you were sitting in your car. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's just so funny that we're talking about this because it makes such a huge difference. And I know the boy's going to see Grant and I know they're going to watch the footage of you with Gary and just be able to reflect back on that because what we're doing is we're creating legacy. Rockstar's building a legacy, but as we lead our families, we're building and creating a, a lasting legacy as well. And, and what is that legacy and what do I want to be remembered? for and how will I lead exceptionally well and create a community that wants to follow me? Am I worth following? Um, it's huge as we lead our teams, as we lead our families, um, as we lead our residents and provide the example for them as well and how they'd like to be treated. Uh, let's wrap with this. In 10 years, so we're going to post global pandemic, once we get through the mess of life that we're all currently in, because we will get through it. When we do in 10 years, what do you guys see as impacting our industry the most? And how can we proactively prepare today for that change? I think when you have a life changing event like COVID-19, mm -hmm. it changes habits, it break habits. Uh, the movie theater will be out of business soon. Mm -hmm. Everybody's discovered, the late adopters discovered Amazon, they discovered Netflix, and they realized I don't wanna go to the movie theater and spend 80 bucks for my family's tickets, yeah. and then spend another 50, 60 bucks on concessions when I can pay anywhere from 10 to $20 and rent it at home. Mm -hmm. I think when, you remember in the very beginning when, when um, um, when, when all the services had the latest movie come out, yes. and you could pay 20 bucks and you didn't have to go to movie theater. Yes. That changed habits. I think we're gonna be going to less sporting events. Mm. Uh, I think people are gonna realize they're gonna start paying attention to uh, the num the dollars. Mm. Uh, if they're going up and up and up. And I think they're gonna they're gonna think, you know, is it really worth my time right. to go to these things? Well, what is worth my time? Yeah. And I think it's gonna change that. So with the apartment world, I think in 10 years, leasing offices will be near non-existent. Really? I really do. I think you're seeing it in at the McDonald's, you're seeing it at, hmm. at the banks, where they basically, you walk in and there's just little machines there, Yeah. right? It's occurring right now. I think you might have somebody there, but I think what's, uh, especially in the class A's, I think they will, it's just going to be self-serve, huh. you know, because they don't need it. If you have the right videos, and this is going to happen, now that everybody's got, they call the videos, the technology, the the um, adaptability is yeah. going to catch up, and, and it's going to, the product's going to get better. Mm. Right. And you're going to be able to lease from your house, which you can now, mm -hmm. but it's going to be better. Mm. It's going to be very high quality. And I don't think you need somebody there. I think every, you know, all of the emergency, all the maintenance requests go through your phone. Mm -hmm. You can pay your rent through your phone. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to go to the office whatsoever. Interesting. You don't. Maintenance guys will have a job forever because stuff breaks. Yes. Yes. Stuff Amen breaks. And finding so good I, ones. <laughs> stuff breaks, especially on the older assets. Yes. Stuff breaks. Um, so I think they have a little bit more job security in the long run. Um, but I think the offices will be closed. You will see offices closed in 10 years, not wide scale, but you'll see the class A's and maybe the high B pluses. Yep. You, you'll see them. And that, uh, <laughs> my, my comment was going to be AI. Yeah. Uh, AI is, is already thinking like a high school student right now. Mm -hmm. And they, they predict in the next five to seven years, it will be thinking like a college graduate. Mm -hmm. Um, so when, when I start having AI, and you already, you already see this on a lot of the, the times when you go to a website that says, hey, do you want to chat? Right. And you click yes. You're not chatting with a person. You're no. chatting with an artificial intelligence. Right. That's taking your question, analyzing it, coming up with the, the correct answer and giving you the answer. And I think when, when that really comes fully developed and can start asking or answering questions that are asked by by potential residents, mm -hmm. that's when you're going to see the the huge shift in how we operate today as far as sales go. Mm. Um, you know, closing of the office, that'll, that'll be a little more difficult just because of the amount of needy people um, <laughs> yeah, that, that we have. But I, I truly believe once the AI gets to the point where they can answer those questions and solve those issues for them, yeah, you're going to see it go away. Mm. I think apartment, I, I think rental apartments are going to be much more like single family apartments. I, I assume you... you uh, you live in a single family house, right? We're buying our first. Okay. You're going you're not gonna have a property manager. No. And you're not gonna have a maintenance manager. I'm gonna have to fix my AC. But yeah, you know what? If you're a homeowner, you still make make do. Right. That's what's gonna happen. Mm. It's gonna happen. This is gonna shift it. So which means that from a maintenance side, we're gonna have to do a better job mm. to make things longer lasting so that they're not so they're more foolproof and they're they're more hardy mm. and they're gonna they're gonna stick. 
you're going to see a reduction in staff 100%. I think you said with the AI, like you said, it's it's getting smarter and smarter and smarter. Um, they're going to be able to have a virtual person there. I mean, we're doing yes. it now on our website. You go to our website, right. there, there's a video of Sola, who we've been with us from almost the beginning. Love and she's there. You press that button. She's there touring you through. She's greeting you and touring you on the website. Yes. Okay. That will be replaced by an actual virtual person. Yeah. And who will be able to answer all your questions for you if you have a question. That's huge. It's coming. There's no doubt in my mind. In 10 years, I think it's going to be there. You'll see in the beginning of it in the class A's. And if you think about it, 10 years ago, everybody said there's no way that we'll adopt online payment. Right. Nobody will do that. Look nobody at us will now. give you their, their, their credit card. And 10 years before that, nobody, and this is relevant to you, nobody <laughs> want, wanted to, to pay for water, trash, and gas. Right. And now it's like a, it's yeah. everybody does it. So events like this cause these things. Yes. You know, when we had the recession, you still had plenty of people not wanting to charge back water, trash, and gas. Mm -hmm. The recession ended that. Mm -hmm. And as, as investors started to buy deals, they need to get an ROI. Mm -hmm. They found you're not paying your water, trash, and gas reallocation or um, reimbursables, mm -hmm. and they charged it. Yes. That's what's going to happen. Investors are going to figure out a way, and they're going to push it. That's huge. And I think it all goes back to barriers to entry. Eliminate them. And what can you automate? That's what we're always trying to push ourselves to do. What can we automate? What can we automate? Where can we save time? Where can we scrape a second here and scrape a minute here to create something more efficient uh, in the whole? Um, this is awesome. Well, and imagine a world five years from now when AI is really kind of kicking in a little bit better. Yes. And I can really kind of shift my on-site team to being straight customer focused. Yes. I'm no longer Ooh. worried about sales. I'm no longer worried about this. I, all I get to do is take care of my residents. Right. I get to make sure that every their every need is, is taken care of in the apartment world. Right? Yes. And when I start having that high touch with the residents, that, that fundamentally changes renewals. Yes. It, it fundamentally changes what I'm willing to pay. You know, I, I kind of go more to a concierge service than a, mm -hmm. than a leasing office, right? Yes. And so that, that fundamentally changes how I interact with, with the property that I'm living in. That's, that's going to be huge. Yeah. And you know, the expectation isn't there either. I'd say I, our portfolio is um, mainly B or C class communities and not speaking in terms of Rockstar here, but it's not the expectation. The residents are not expecting it. It, it is a surprise to be met with a, a positive level of service to have an on-site team that goes above and beyond to make sure that um, you're signing your lease today, but the service that you're receiving is so that in 12 months, we're renewing you instead of you being very angry and leaving or not pleased and breaking your lease and going through whatever that shebang looks like. Um, it, it's not expected and, and it's a pleasant surprise whenever this again this notion of an elevated lifestyle a nearly upscale living a product that this potential you know demographic could not afford elsewhere is able to be met with within these communities um it really pumps new life into these markets it really does when we talk about humble when we talk about alvin when we talk about kingwood or kingsville wherever really we're, what we're doing is we're pumping life into these areas and it's huge it's absolutely huge um this has been fantastic. I want to say thank you guys so much. Uh, Robert, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Ian, it's been great chatting with you. Um, for everybody who's listening, thank you for tuning in and for continuing to be a part of this series and, and listening as we continue to grow. Super excited to bring you guys some more content. Um, so please stay tuned for that. Thank you again, Robert and Ian and the whole Rockstar team. Andrew and I are beyond grateful for the opportunity to work with this team and they are ones to watch. So uh, if you're not in the know, you should be in the know by now and put Rockstar on your Instagram feed, on your Facebook feed, follow Robert the apartment rock star because not only are they shifting the industry as we know it but the content that they're creating and providing for investors within the industry is also huge uh, Robert provides a ton of content in terms of how do you transform you know, your retirement savings. How do you transform what you thought your lifestyle would look like um, when you're ready to slow down and settle into investing in a thriving multifamily portfolio, uh, really pumping new life uh, into what your lifestyle could be? It's huge. It really is huge and it's game changing. So please tune in and stay tuned for more content. As always, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you and we'll talk next time. Bye guys.